Okay, I think we can start 9.31, I see on the East Coast, and welcome. Uh, welcome everybody, class number for, for 72 in our ongoing series, and like always, I want to thank you, Potkin Bechwad Aksanya, all the people who come to enable me to give this year and prepare for this year. So I was uh, continuing, then I said, you know what, it's Purim on Tuesday, so we have to discuss a little Purim, of course, but since it's a class on Tila, and I, I checked my notes, I see we, unless I'm, I'm missing them, we did not talk about Al Anisi Mampurim last year. We talked about it, I know, on Hanukkah, but obviously the the Hanukkah version. So we'll get to we'll, you know, we'll see. And if there's any time left over, you know, that'll be uh, interesting. Then we can go back to our regular series. Okay, I just see somebody sent me um, a private note. It's interesting on this manim. I was saying that when I was a kid, just to pick up from last week, when uh, you know, you know, Shabbos used to end always an hour later. Um, and now it ends about an hour and seven minutes later, whatever happened. So it was very fascinating. Last Shabbos in Shul, but somebody says to me, why does Shabbos end so late these days? It always ends later. I was like blown away. I said, I just spoke about that. I'm going to share this morning. I don't exactly know why, but somebody sent me um, a private text that in their um, Shul, it's exactly one hour. Okay. Uh, I, they're asking for a lesson on some anime. So we did have a lesson. We had a four, uh, three-part series. Oh boy, it's really bad of me. I'm forgetting who gave this series. He's really the world's expert on Zmani. He's a scientist. This is like a pet peeve of his. His son-in-law is Ari Leibowitz, who also spoke I heard yesterday for the first time live. His his 10-minute Divrei Halacha, people may know about it. Uh, Rosh Hashiva at YU. But um, we did have a series. If, uh, if you send me an email, I can send you the link. I just, I can't, his name slips my memory. I apologize. We did it um, about a year ago. And on Zmani, and let's just say, very, very, very quickly um, um, and briefly, in different periods of Jewish history and different periods of times, you know, you know, Shabbos either started much earlier or much later than we started. Um, and most of the time, much later. You know, according to the Shulchan Aruch, um, Rabbeinu Tam is the correct way to observe Shabbos. In other words, Rabbeinu Tam assumes it gets darker much, much later than we assume. Um, the way m most people now, um, when Rabbeinu, so I'm sure most people know that people who want to be strict, they end Shabbos, they hold Rabbeinu Tam. So if you hold Rabbeinu Tam, you end Shabbos uh, basically 72 minutes after sunset, a half an hour later, more or less. Um, Shabbos ends approximately half an hour later. So and I don't know how many people here on this call do that. I imagine not too many, and uh, not so many people do that. But, uh, you know, some people want to be strict like Rabbeinu Tam. But it's not that Rabbeinu Tam, he wasn't strict. Because according to Rabbeinu Tam, you can begin Shabbos later. It's, in other words, it's not like uh, Rabbeinu Tam said end Shabbos later. Rabbeinu Tam thinks the day begins about 55 minutes later. So according to Rabbeinu Tam, let's say in Toronto, when is sunset this evening? About 6 o'clock in Toronto, 5.55? I don't know. Or let me know. 5.55 is sunset. So according to Rabbeinu Tam, at 6.45, you can drive your car. I mean, he didn't say you can drive your car, but uh, 55 minutes, 57 and a half minutes after sunset, you can still, no, I mean, today, nobody holds like that. But uh, so people are strict. We hold that it's at sunset that they begins, not at nightfall. That's really the argument at what point, sunset or nightfall and the gap between. And uh, so, but people are strict Rabbeinu Tam. But there were many times in history that many people observed Rabbeinu Tam. My understanding, I heard from a prominent rabbi that Ara Yom Azeh, when, or when I heard it from him in uh, certain enclaves in the, the Orthodox world, Ara Yom Azeh, they hold like Rabbeinu Tam. And Friday afternoon, People are working, you know, a half an hour after sunset. So, uh, you know, it's very, very interesting. So Zmanim is a fascinating topic. It's an amazing topic, but really that's not at all our topic. Okay, but uh, since I did mention it last week, I wanted to pick up on that. Okay, all right, let's continue. Okay, let's continue. We're going to start al, al Anasim. So first of all, um, okay, consider, when did the Jewish people pray in, um, in Shushan? There's a class on, on the Siddur. So what, what prayers did the Jewish people say in, in Shushan? It's like a trick question. Because the answer is, at least the obvious answer is, none. Um, they did fast. Esther, but there's not one mention of prayer in Megillah Esther. Um, now, why that is, is a fascinating discussion. I sort of, we've alluded to in classes, I don't know, other people, you know, there are many different ways to read Mikilat Esther. 
Um, the beauty of the book is it lent, and that's of course on purpose, it lends itself to many readings. And one of the readings is a sort of very like assimilationist reading that the Jews were pretty not religious. I mean, even when 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 Chazal say they ate from the Suda of Ahashver show, I don't know if they I presumably they didn't have kosher food, or may, maybe they did, I don't know. But uh, presumably they ate at the Suda of Ahashver, they weren't eating kosher food. Uh, the, the Jews uh, were assimilated. We know the Rambam says prayer, the, the reason we have prayer, the way we have prayer today is because of this assimilation. When the Jews went to Bavel, basically in 586, really 597, uh, a lot, the first exile was 11 years before, if you look at the end of, of Tanakh in Malachim Beit, the exile was really 11 years early. Now, it's unclear, I think, um, Rabbi Bazak in his Hebrew shir on Sunday, who was Haglam Yerushalam? Who was Exa? Was it Mordechai or Kish? Right? So it, it's probably um, Kish. Um, I, that's the, the debate. And that, of course, is the debate. When is the timeline of, of the Megillah? But um, they were exiled in 597, then again in 586 with the destruction of the temple. And the Rambam says within a generation, the people didn't speak Hebrew anymore. They spoke five languages backwards. You know, like I went through, the, obviously I can't mention any names, but I was once at a, an event and the Arab got up to speak. So somebody comes to me, he speaks three languages poorly. You know, uh, you know when they speak in English and uh, Hebrew, English, English, Yiddish, whatever. So uh, that's the Rambam says that's what happened. The Jews were speaking all different languages. They didn't know what to do. So the the Anshek Nesed Agola came along and said, no, no, here's the prayer. Because as we've discussed many times, prayers from the heart, it's spontaneous. We're not supposed to have a text for prayer, but uh, it's very hard. We wouldn't know what to say. So they- you see, they... Rabbi, Rabbi, I have heard that uh, when, when the Jews all- um fasted for three days when Esther asked him to fast and she fasted as well that that was with prayer that, yeah, that was it could be it could be but I, that's what I'm saying there are many ways to read the Megillah but the Megillah doesn't say they prayed listen the simplest meaning when were the three days they fasted what, what days on the calendar Pesach. when did they fast Pesach. right Pesach now, when, how did I know they fast? It says, uh, they fasted on, um, they, um, they, um, um, the 13th of, I, I can pull up the verse, but if you have a Megillah and Perak, like Gimel, it was on the 12th, the 13th of Nisan that they sent the messages to, you know, everybody, we're going to wipe out all the Jews. On the 13th of Nisan, we wiped them out in Adar. And then Mordechai rips his clothes and he goes, go fast, soon we'll have for three days. Well, what do you mean three days? That's the Seder. Two-starry, maybe. They probably didn't have two-starry yet. The simple meaning of the Megillah was Seder. Who observed Pesach? These are assimilated Jews. What do you mean? Now, the Medrash picks up on that. The Medrash says, I don't know if I mentioned this last week, or the Medrash said that, um, I, I don't know why I would have, but uh, the Medrash says, that Mordechai said, whoa, 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 we can't fast today. When, when he finally convinces Esther to go into Achashverosh, so Esther says, okay, before I go, everybody fast for three days. So the Mordechai, hold on, yeah, that oh, next week, I, I didn't mean go in today, you'll go in next week, we can't fast, you're not that fast on Pesach. It's Betika's Chamech tonight, right? Uh, obviously it wasn't, but that's how the Medrash picks up on that. And Esther says to Mordechai, what are you, nuts? It's Pikuach Nefesh. You don't do this now. There won't be Pesach. The Jewish people will be exterminated, right? That's the end of the game. So now, but that's clearly not the simple reading of the Megillah. The simple reading, so even if they were from whatever, so I understand Pikuach Nefesh. But the simple reading of the Megillah is Jews are totally assimilated. And they, they don't even know it's, it's, it's Pesach. I always like to quote, and people are always blown away when I say this. Uh, okay, what percent, and I live in Toronto, which is known to be a traditional city. Everybody knows that in Canada, we're more traditional than not, than the America as a, a Jewish community. You know, the conservative reform movements are much more traditional than they are in the States. 30% of all Jewish like children in Toronto get a day school education. That's uh, in the States, it's like 8%. It's like a, a totally different community here. Baruch Hashem in, in, in a positive way. We have lots of ways to go, but uh, in a very positive way. Way. No, how many Jews, what percentage of Jews in Toronto go to Shul on Yom Kippur? What do you think? The three day a year Jew. 
How many Jews? Uh, th throw the number. What, what percentage of Jews go to Toronto? Don't be afraid. Put it in the chat box, anonymous, whatever. It's okay. 80%. 80 80%. Good guess. 80%. Anybody think it's higher? 80%. I know every, everybody I know goes to Shul on Yom Kippur. I'm talking Yom Kippur. That's it. Just 25 25 percent. Uh, so Morris is on the ball. Uh, I thought it was closer to 30, but uh, Morris might be right. But maybe 20 years ago it was the 30 percent. Yeah, you count up every seat in every shul in the city of Toronto, from the humanist minion to the 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 anything that you know the the secular uh, the where we don't mention God in our Yom Kippur gathering to you know every Haredi community. You add up every seat in shul. About 30,000 seats, 40,000 seats, maybe. Uh, there are 200,000 Jews who live in, in, in Toronto. Most people, most Jews are not going to shul on Yom Kippur. Uh, we're, we're so, we live in such a, a, um, a cocoon. We don't understand what's going out there in the wider Jewish community, maybe because I'm coming back from a rabbinic conference. And one of the, of the sessions we had was how to deal with, the, the, what's the rabbi's responsibility to the community at large? Forget our little shul and whatever. I mean, so um, it's, you know, so, that's Shushan. Well, the, the Jews are so religious. Uh, maybe, you know, uh, the, and assuming, remember the Jew, and, and some people read the Megillah as the tension, which is, of course, a very, um, today, it's a, with, it's a very good reading, I would say tragically for our time. The Megillah is read as a book of tension between the Jews in Israel and the Jews living outside of Israel, because again, we don't know when the story took place. There are debates, and that's, of course, on purpose. The Megillah is purposely am ambiguous, but assuming the Megillah takes place after the Jews are granted the right to come back to Israel, so why are these people in Israel? Well, why are these people in, in Persia? Well, what, what do you mean? They're supposed to go to Israel, but we know most Jews didn't go back, uh, like, like me and most other people. You know, They didn't go back, and they stayed in Persia. The Jews in Israel were very mad at them, and they didn't want to accept that. There's a whole reading of the Megillah like that, that there's a, um, resentment at the Jews. Look what happened to you guys, and you caused all, all the problems. You're supposed to be living back in Israel. So, you know, it's very interesting. So we there is no obvious prayer in the Megillah. It could be, uh, but the Megillah doesn't say so. The only one reference, and I'll just... Uh, I'll show it to you, and it's even that is not not at all clear what it means. But let's just share our screen for a moment, and I'll just show you the. Uh, no, I, that's the wrong place. What am I doing here? Okay, so just give me a half a second. Okay, so it's towards the end of the Megillah, of course. Uh, everybody, see what's going on here? Why is my thing out of the Zoom box? Okay, all right. Um, so at the end of the Megillah, everybody see see this when it's going on. But the Klaves Tera Malkaba Rabbi Chayil and Mordechai a Yehudi at Kol Atok. If you notice Mordechai is a Yehudi, I don't know who Esther is. Esther is by Rabbi Chayil. Okay, at Kol that's another question. How assimilated was Esther? By Shlach Svarim, they sent books. Right, the, the ninth chapter is all the back and forth. Should Purim be a holiday? The Gemara says the rabbis didn't want to make Purim a holiday. Okay, that's not for now. And how Purim developed. It was a, it was meant to be a two-day holiday for everybody. Now we split it. And it's kind of ironic. Like um Jew, Purim is supposed to be the holiday of Jewish unity. You know, uh Yudim are coming together. That's what Purim's all about. You know, all that stuff. Purim's all day of Jewish unity. And we have a holiday where not because we don't know the calendar. Because uh, we set up the calendar. If you live in, in Jerusalem, you celebrate one day. You live outside of Jerusalem, you celebrate another day. It's a little bit not so good. But that's the disunity that's going on in, in the Jewish people. But the Kayemet, you may, you may notice here the plural, Purimele Bizmanehem, the beginning of Masech Megillah is a whole uh, long thing. Be in their times, Megillah can be read at many different times, right? The, in, in Halacha, you can read the Megillah, at least in the time of the Talmud, from the 11th. Four days in advance. Okay. Kasher kiyem aleim Mordechai Yudi. Kasher kimu al nafsham that the Mordechai, the Jew, and Esther, the queen. Interesting. And they uh, brought on their their souls al zaram and all their descendants. The brehat somot, the fasting. So presumably that's the three day fast v'zakatam and their zak their zaka, whatever that means. They're crying out. So right there. Um, like I'll just let's see here. I'll just show you the Malbim. Like why why is it not showing up? Uh, resources. Just to show commentary. 
So the Malbim living the uh, 19th century, one of the most important commentaries on, on Nach, um, especially. Uh, we, we don't know. We, we, we don't exactly know what's, uh, what's going on here. But anyways, that's the only theoretical reference to prayer in the Megillah. But fine. Um, obviously, the rabbis read Megillat Esther as a um, religious book, in a sense. Now, we know it's also missing God's name. That also gives it this sort of a secular feel to the book. But that's just a little bit of, of, of a background. There really is no prayer for the Gila. And there was a whole debate whether Purim should be a holiday. The rabbis were, why did the rabbis not want to make Purim a holiday? By the way, anybody know? Okay, so they didn't want to antagonize the non-Jewish world. What are you doing celebrating, defeating? The, we, we have enough. We have Amalek, you know, we defeated uh, enough times. We don't have to every time, uh, every time something. Uh, and basically, nothing happened on Purim. I mean, why, why don't we say hello on Purim? Well, at least we'll do now just one of the reasons. Gar says, because nothing happened. What changed from the beginning to the end of the Megillah? What happened is in the middle, there was a crisis. The crisis got solved. But nothing changed. On Pesach, we became free. On Shavuos, let's say, the way we celebrate Shavuos, we got the Torah. On Sukkot, we journeyed towards the land of Israel. On Hanukkah, we reestablished the Beit HaMikdash. What, what happened on Purim? Nothing. That's chapter 10 in the Megillah. That's what I remember, Rav Hadar, Rav Yeshua Hadar, the Rosh Yeshiva and Yeshiva Nakotel, when I was there many, many years ago, I remember him speaking about this. What's chapter 10 doing in the Megillah? Chapter 10, it's almost tax season. Maybe it is tax season as a former accountant, right? So, put taxes on the Jew, on the people. Well, who cares? What do you mean, who cares? Life, life continues. Taxes, you know, arguing deficits, the uh, GDP, you know, that's what we're talking about. That's it. And Mordechai was uh, loved. Um, the, um, what's the how's what's the last pasuk in the Megillah? Mordechai um, was beloved. Lerubachav. Mordechai was uh, loved by the majority. Here, I'll, I'll pull up the verse. It's an uh, it's like it's mind boggling. So it's uh, my so it's a, the the rabbis are. I love how the rabbis you know their I don't say their their courage, but the way they read things, it's really beautiful. By Yasemelech Mas, he put taxes. I don't know. In some shuls, they bang. The, the Gregor for that too, you know, but okay. And everything's written. You want to read more? Okay, read the history books. Go to the Divrei, read Persian history books. Mordechai like Yosei, because we don't have time for that now, but I'm sure many of you have heard the story of Purim is obviously the author of Megillah Esther had the Chumash by Yeshev and by, by Miketz and by open in front of him. The parallels to the Yosef story are very big. Rabbi Bazak talked about that. A little bit, we'll go into that. But Mordechai was the Mishnel, the Melech HaKashverosh, like Yosef. He was beloved. He got 62% of the vote. Mordechai, Rav Echad, that's what the Gemara says. The Gemara doesn't say, say 62%. The Gemara says Rav, but not called. You know, more, lots of complainers. You can never satisfy everybody. Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't satisfy everybody, but it's more than that. The rabbis say not just he, not everybody liked Mordechai. The Sanhedrin didn't like Mordechai. The rabbis didn't like Mordechai. Mordechai was a nutcase. It's a radical. What, what's he endangering? The, the Jewish people not bound to him. And there was not, it's not, I don't know what you were taught in kindergarten, was I was taught in kindergarten that uh, Mordechai was wearing, Haman's wearing a, an idol and therefore he can't buy that. It's all very nice, but there's absolutely no evidence of that at all. And um, and even if that would be true, it doesn't mean that would be bound down to an idol. And the rabbis uh, were very critical of him in many readings of the Megillah. What, 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 in that case, uh, you, know, you don't start up with the, the, the people, but that's what happened. That's uh, anyways. That's what Mordechai, um, um, you know, uh, did. But it's interesting. Mordechai was not beloved. So, but the last chapter in the Megillah is telling us nothing happened. So that's what the Gemara says. There's no hello. Most people know the reason. There's no hello. Like if you did a, a survey of a hundred relatively knowledgeable Jews, like like people here, so you're going to tell me why don't we say hello on Purim? Everybody, tell me why we don't say hello on Purim. Is the whole Megillah? I'm sorry. 
The whole McGill yeah, is a hollow. Yeah, you said you're too smart. Go to the more basic. Smart. 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 Outside of Israel, right? Every if you went to a Zionist school, of course, that's uh, outside of Israel. Cannot say hollow for a miracle outside of Israel. Maybe we'll come well, back. Rabbi Kelman. Yeah. Nace Nistar also. I'm sorry. A Nace Nistar. No, so the, the Gemara gives three reasons we don't say hello. Says Akate Anan Abde We're still slaves to Achashverosh. That's chapter ten. We still have to pay taxes. We're slaves. Nothing changed. The Megillah opens up by Yibi The Megillah ends by Yibi It was just nine years later, ten years later. You know um, that the Megillah ends. It's, the Megillah takes place over nine years. Year three, and then everything exciting happens in year twelve. That's there were also seventy-five thousand uh, <laughs> uh, Persians killed. Over. No, that, that's right. Do we celebrate that? That's a whole discussion. We, we don't want to like to make holidays for that's even on Hanukkah. Why, why is Hanukkah eight days and not seven? So some say one day is for the miracle of the war. And some say, no, 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 no. We don't celebrate when we go to war. That's terrible. Sometimes you have to go to war, but we're not going to make a holiday out of it. Right. But I'm saying even that, but that's a tragedy that had to happen for the Jews to be saved, but not, we we didn't leave Egypt, we didn't come to Israel, we didn't get the Torah, we didn't rebuild the Beit Hamikdash, we didn't do anything. We paid taxes, so there's nothing to celebrate. We're still slaves to Achashverosh. There's no point to say hello now. Now, but yet it is holiday. That's like a we didn't make it holiday, but that's the simple reason. Nothing changed in the Megillah over the course of nine years. It was very nerve wracking. Although, if you were a Persian living in Shushan. I don't know if you would have noticed. Remember, we read it in, in in a half an hour, so the story's all pretty cool. But like, remember, Vashti's um, dethroned, whatever happens to her, in year three. Esther's appointed in year seven. Who remembers Vashti in year seven? And then it's in year 12. And then uh, it's in year 12, Achashverosh can't fall asleep. And then he feel, oh, Bitan, who heard of Bitan Bateresh? You know, like, uh, and it's like, you don't necessarily know. And then the Jew, they, okay, we will kill the Jew. It's, it's like, it doesn't, that, you know, it doesn't necessarily read the way we read it, that everything is connected to each other. You're living, you know, you live in any country there, this government and that government, they passed this law, that law, but really nothing happened in Megillah. So, so that's why we don't say hello. The rabbis didn't want to make it a holiday before for this reason. We don't want to antagonize the coin so much. It's a, what, 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 what do we make a big holiday? Because we because 75,000 Persians got killed. That's not enough reason. So it went back and forth. But the Chitov Esther, I'm not fine. Kituni, the door, it's a wonderful safer. I've uh, written by, um, Bachrach, Yoshua I, I, Bachrach, I, I don't think he's alive anymore. I think he taught um, Miklala for a number of years. He wrote, Ima Shal Machud on Ruth. He goes through the Megillah, through the Mikorot in Chazal, through the sources in Chazal. Very good work. Kituni Ledorot. Write me down for all generations. That was Esther's plea to the um, the sages, but the sages didn't um, didn't want to do that. And then it, it got it. So we have to figure out, I, I, I'm getting, I want to get to Al Alanisim in a moment, but that figure out why they did make it into a holiday. So that's an interesting question. But there was hesitancy to make it as a holiday. Even when they made it as a holiday, we don't say hello. Zeb pointed out the third reason, and it's really a totally opposite reason. What do we don't say? Of course we say hello. The Megillah. Megillah is hello. Kriyatazu Megillah. And the Meiri, I believe, rules that if you're on a desert island on Purim, you're you're stuck in, in a snowstorm at the airport and you can't get back and you don't have a and uh you um you don't have a Megillah, you, you so you say hello. And there was I, I don't have to say hello because I heard Megillah Esther. But if I don't hear Megillah Esther, I have to say hello. So I don't know that we actually pass him like that, and I don't really care, but it's just kind of interesting. He he says that, but what's 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 this response saying? This is what I'm saying Purim is so important. Purim is so important, we have its own hell. We have a half an hour halal, and oh, everybody gets stressed up and all excited. Every other yantif we have is the plain, you know, plain regular halal. So it's a fascinating. The other two reasons we can't say hello. Nothing changed. We're we're paying taxes, and uh, then then it didn't happen in this year. So that's the reason we haven't addressed so much. Um, but uh, basically, um, communal events can only uh, a a big halal 
the Jewish community only lives in Israel. There's no dean of uh, um, at Seba. Remember when I first came to Yeshiva Hakoto, so they introduced me all the Rambans. You know, you, you, they they love the Ramban because the Ramban of all our Rishonim, of all our medieval authorities, is the greatest Zionist. The Ramban, the mitzvot are basically practiced outside of Israel. The Ramban was a really, really big Zionist. Other uh, Rishonim were uh, didn't feel it so important. Uh, Moshe Feinstein, that's in our day, it's very nice to live in Israel, but uh, you don't have to live in Israel. If you fulfill a mitzvah, it's nice. We're not, I'm not here to discuss the importance living in Israel. Not obviously, we feel, I think anybody here feels it's a very important mitzvah. It's a mitzvah, as Rav Shachter says, it's a mitzvah of our generation. Every generation, every time period has mitzvah to take on greater importance. No, no. But, the, but there's no community in the same way outside of the land of Israel. But those are three reasons. We don't say halal. Whether they, well, they do disagree a little bit. Kriyatazu halal, the reading on the Megillah is halal and we're still slaves. Obviously, those two reasons I think are in conflict. They could agree with the reason that they're not in Israel. Okay. Anyways, but um, um, I, I will say if I have time at the end, I'll come back to it. But we were just saying, you know, so Purim, there's this hesitancy. The rabbis don't want to make Purim a holiday. And then they finally do, but they don't let us say halal on, on Purim. And, you know, they're downplaying Purim in many ways. On the other hand, you know, uh, the Rav has a, a, um, the first book I read on the Rav, uh, Reflections of the Rav. The first really, one of the first things they published in English, Rabbi, Rabbi Bezdin, who was the um, head of JSS at Yeshiva University. JSS to James Stryer's in, in school. I don't know what it's called nowadays. I am sure it has um, a different name, but if anybody here remembers what JSS, JSS was basically the Balchuva Yeshiva of Yeshiva University. Yeshiva University was like the first organization, maybe them and, and the and Lubavitch was the first, you know, outreach. But YU created this program for people with very weak backgrounds. Instead of, you know, you normally went to IU, you learn Kumar for six hours a day. So they created this program, JSS, James Stryer School, to teach Alape different things that, uh, so for many years, Rabbi Bezdin, Allah Shalom, Abraham Bezdin ran a JSS. His, his motto was, it, not about it. He, he, they would they come in. Moshe he, Bezdin, he, Moshe Bezdin, not Abraham. Abraham was, oh, his Moshe, Abraham was his brother. Thank you very much, yeah. So thank you for that. I, okay. Um, so he, uh, but so who, oh, so maybe it was Abraham Besson then who, who wrote the book. Maybe it wasn't the one she said, but one of the Besson brothers wrote a book, Reflections of the Rav. He took excerpts from some of the drushes of the Rav and reflections, like four pages in easy English. That's before they published a lot of the stuff they published afterwards. So it's interesting. So there, there's an essay on Rav Soloveitchik explaining this uh, radical, uh, almost heretical statement that Purim is more important than Yom Kippur. Because the name of Yom Kippur is not Yom Kippur. If you look at the Chumash, Yom Kippur is Yom Kippurim. Yom Kippurim. Now, Yom Kippurim uh, means a day like, like Purim. Yom Kippur is Yom Kippurim. It's a day like Purim, meaning Purim is the most important holiday. Yom Kippur is like, you know, it, it's like Purim. It's almost like Purim. So, of course, this idea, which is radical to say the least, I want to leave that for now. If there's any time at the end, we can discuss about the rub and reflections of the rub has four explanations. I remember what in the world are we saying? So there's this. It's part of the unknown about Purim. Everything's hidden about Purim. Everything's, you know, beneath the surface. So everything is like upside down, but not vocal. So it's, on the one hand, yeah, you know, Purim is like not so important. We don't want Purim, you know. And and the, the fact that we have a whole chapter in the book explaining how we're going to make Purim, writing back and forth letters, yes, accept it, don't accept it, tells you there is a lot of, it wasn't easy. Purim did not become a holiday easily. And on the other hand, it's like the most important holiday of the year. So, uh, and the rabbis and Chazal associate Purim with the receiving of the Torah. I'll just, maybe I, I'll say one more thing, and then hopefully we'll get to Alanisim itself. Um, the rabbis say, you know, until Purim, maybe we should be a little bit upset at Purim. Until Purim, everybody had an excuse not to be observant because the Gemara says at Mount Sinai, God put a mountain overhead by the Yetzirah Tachtit. Tahar, the Jewish people in camp Tachtit, literally underneath the mountain. So obviously it doesn't mean underneath them, it's at the side. But literally, Tachtit, why does it say Tachtit? So the Medrash picks up on this. Tachat, God held up the mountain. If you get the Torah, you guys, cool, that's great. You don't want to, you don't have to accept the Torah. That's fine, it's up to you. Just want you to know, Shem Teik Vurachem, this is your burial place. You don't have to accept the Torah, but you know, you see this mountain? It's coming down. So the Gemara says, ooh, amazing. So when I come to Shemaim, God said, why, why, why don't I keep the Torah? <laughs> I was forced. You can't put a gun. You can't make me enter into a contract. 
Forget Nasa Benishma. That's a whole other discussion that comes afterward. But this Gemara, so uh, you can't put a gun to somebody's head and, and that contract is binding. We accept it or under duress. And therefore, um, I'm, it's not binding on me. I have an excuse. The Gemara said, that's good until Purim. Ah, oh, but Purim, the Jewish people, they loved it. Kimu Bakiblu, Kimu Masha Kiblu Kvar. The Jewish people accepted what they had already previously accepted, but they accepted it with love and desire. So Purim becomes a day of accepting of the Torah, which of course compares it to Yom Kippur. Because Yom Kippur is the day we got the first, I mean, the first time we got on Shavuos, but we, we broke that Torah on Shiva Sarbatamu. So the forgiveness for Chet Ego, where it's going to read next week, happens on Yom Kippur. That's what Yom Kippur is all about. So the Torah we got, that's why the Lord says the happiest day of the year, Yom Kippur and Tubab. The people go, we celebrate. Yom Kippur is a day of Kabbalah Satorah, and Purim is a day of Kabbalah Satorah. So you have this sort of wide range. So there's a lot to discuss. I'm throwing out sort of all kinds of ideas about what kind of a holiday is Purim. Okay, you can think about that some more, do some Robert research, some articles. Yes, quickly, there, and then we're going to discuss Alanisi. Is there a medrash somewhere that says that in the Moisa Mashiach is only going to be Purim? It's not only a medrash, it's a Rambam. A it's Rambam. a very so difficult Rambam. That? Why is that later? Please, God, I, I, I'll discuss that, right? I think that I may have talked about last year. I don't remember. I have to look my notes. Um, the Rambam says, the, the Rambam quotes this idea that all of Tanakh will be Batel, except for the Chamisha Chum Torah and Megillah said, now, the, the fact that the Rambam says that is radical enough, the problem is it makes the Rambam a heretic, according to the Rambam, because the Rambam says anybody who thinks the Torah is ever going to change is um, a, um, a heretic. That's a, the Rambam's a big into that. So how the Rambam can define himself as a heretic, but we have to discuss, <laughs> we'll discuss this at an, another time. Yeah, that's it. The Rambam, I have to look it up the exact language, maybe at the end of the year and question that so we can do that. But I, I want to discuss since it's already late and I'm, you know, I didn't begin what I wanted to actually talk about. Um, let's do the, um, I, I, I just said there's no prayer in the Megillah, but we have Alanisi. Okay, so let's discuss Alanisi. So the first thing I want to discuss very briefly, the difference between Alanisi and Yala Yavo. So whenever there's a special day, we add Rosh Chodesh, all the Yamim Tovim and Rosh Chodesh, we add Yala Yavo. So it would be, you know, what's the distinction? Seems pretty, I guess on the surface, a pretty obvious distinction, which is, what, why, what, what, what's the difference between, I mean, obviously the words are different, but what, what, what why do you say Yala Yavo here and Alani Sim there? And also Yala Yavo is said in Ritzei, right Yala before Modim, and Alani Sim is said right after Modim. They're both in the last three brachot, right? Um, you know, Shevach Bakasha Hoda'a. They're in the third section of the Shulchan Aruch. But one of them is at the beginning of the third section, Birchat Avoda, where we, we pray for the restoration of the temple service. Ritzei Hashem, Utvashevat Avodali, Vir Betacha, return the service, Betachazena Einenu, Veshub Chalitzion. That's the first bracha. That's where Yala Viyavo is. Then the second bracha, Motim. Thank you, God. Motim. And that's where Alanisi, we thank God. So, how, how does one like when do we do Yalav Yavo? When do we do Alan Nisim? Oh. Yochevet, you want to say something? I'm thinking maybe Yalav Yavo is sort of in place of the carbon we would have brought had we had the temple. Okay, right. So Yalav Yavo is is a prayer for re, basically it's a prayer for re-establishing the, our temple service. That's why it's in Avoda. Yalav Yavo You know the whole bracha is really it, it doesn't directly say, it, but it's really a um, a, a bracha. To return the biblical service of Oda. There is no biblical service. There are no korbanas on Rosh Hashanah. And um, and um, I'm sorry, there are no korbanas on Hallel, on Hallel, on Purim and Hanukkah, right? Um, so here, let's see, if you look in Yalav Yavo, right? Um, oh, God should redeem us. So, even that word, Yeshu, Yehosh, Yeh, is to redeem us, that's the Ramban. In uh, in Sefer Shmot, that redemption is the building of the Beit Hamikdash. That's what, in other words, why is the, the parsha we're reading now? Why is it the book of of, of Shmot? Because Shmot is the redemption of the Jewish people. So the redemption starts with a physical redemption. Then we get into a spiritual redemption at Amatan Torah, and then we get the continuation of the spiritual redemption. The 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 the, the, the Torah coming with us in 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 the Mishkan, building a Mishkan, building the Beit Hamikdash. Well, that's what redemption means. So Yala Yavo, we don't have these korbanas anymore. We don't, and remember, Rosh Chodesh is a biblical holiday. 
The korbanot on Rosh Chodesh are the exact same as on Pesach and Shavuot. Shte parim, one ayil, and shivak fasim, right? Two, one, and and so it's it's a it's, it's a biblical pattern. So I, I I think it's the Rav explained that the Rosh Chodesh is like a, a temple holiday. We don't really do much outside of the temple, but when the temple's over, Rosh Chodesh is a, a big deal. And uh, today, you know, we say half halo, minak is very halo. But um, so Yalav Yavo is for the um, yeah, the biblical that. holidays, and the, it's yeah, a prayer. prayer. Yeah, and hold on one second. And then and Alanisim, Alanisim, of course, is is not a prayer. It's Thanksgiving, and it's for rabbinic holidays. It's not for what will be Yalav Yavo. God shall, well, this is what we want God to do. Alanisim is we thank God for what was. So it's two separate ideas. One is therefore in the bracha of the avoda, and one is in the bracha of hoda of saying thank you um, to God. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. you want to say something? I just want to say that yeah, Allah, the terms yeah, Allah be avoda that it should go up like a korban. That is, it's, it's ah, very good, very good. Yeah, Allah, right, like a, a korban Allah. Excellent, right. So right at the beginning, right, right. But it's clear it's a prayer, so it's very different. You got kanagam for him on one hand, and um, and. Um, and um, the biblical holidays, on the other hand, and where it said, it's how it's said. Now, you'll also notice there's no there's no prayer in Alam Yisim, right? Uh, it's, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, we, we give thanks. It's all that. You're not allowed to say prayer. There were, I, I see in um, in in the Tip Bina, the wonderful six-volume set of Rav Jakobson on, on Tfilah. So he quotes, in certain communities, they used to have a custom to end Al Hanisim, how do they end it? They ended up. Uh, they said, "Kishem Shasita Imahem Pela Kena Seimanu." The same way you did wonders for the previous generations, please do wonders for us. And of course, we don't do that. The Mar Rutenberg, we, 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 that's not what we do. Okay. It's not about asking for for uh, for anything. It's just to acknowledge, to say thank you, which is very interesting. You know, you don't like, uh, you know, when somebody makes a. Um, a donation, you don't call them up and say thank you. Uh, would you like to increase your your donation? You know, like you say thank you, and then you call them a week later when you increase your donation, or a year later, whatever the case is. But uh, you know, we we separate thank you and we separate when we ask for things, and that's uh, that's what we do. Okay, now um, just a few other things. So let's. I I want to compare a little bit um, the Al Hanisim of Hanukkah and the Al Hanisim of important. So before we start, there's also something fascinating. So, you know, the one on Purim is much shorter. Uh, maybe it's only one, you know, so it may be, make it easier to learn off by heart. You know, by Hanukkah, you say it so many times. By the eighth day, everybody knows al Nisim of heart. By Purim, it's only one day, so you have to memorize it. No, that's just a bad joke. But um, um, but uh, it is much shorter. The question is, but uh, we'll discuss why is it much shorter. But what the first fascinating thing you notice in the al Nisim is who's missing? Who's missing an al Anisim on Purim? Who, let's say, who's not missing on Hanukkah, or that concept is not missing, right? If uh, if you go to the Alan here, I'm going to share my screen with you. I, I pulled up al Anisim. I think I have it here. Or maybe I should get rid of the English just to make it easier to read. Okay, al Anisim. So here, I'm going to. I'm just going to do it in Hebrew. Uh, you know, just to so it's easier to compare. Okay. So here got the one on Hanukkah. Okay, so it starts the same. Alanisim, alapurkan, different ways to thank you. Miracles, salvation, um, strength, um, you know, wars that you've done for us. And we tell Hanukkah a whole story. It was in the days of, okay, so it starts the same. Be may mati job and yochanan going gadol. And be may mordechai bester, bishushan habira. So right away, it tells you this is not taking place in Israel. I can see, it doesn't say be may um, Mordechai Chashmonai in Yerushalayim. It just says, you know, it's interesting, but you know, it's interesting. You know, it's interesting to be rab, but still, that's also important. Keshamad Aleim Haman Harasha. Same thing. Be made to Keshamda Aleim Machud Harasha. So it's very interesting. On Pranaka, a whole kingdom. Uh, in other words, it was uh, the whole people rebelled. Purim, not like that. One guy, Haman. The 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 Persian people have nothing against the Jews. That's they they say if they they, they, they got this letter like to kill the Jews. Like why are we killing all the Jews? Like uh, the, it's it's not it was it, it's I just you know it's the <laughs> it's the um, Greek 
way of life, the Greek assimilationist, the, the, the Hellenist, right? That um, poor him, no, it's one, but one guy can uh, cause a, um, a genocide. We know what one person can do, unfortunately. So it's Haman Harasha. There's no mention of Achashverosh. And Achashverosh is, um, you know, interesting, uh, different views on, is, is Achashverosh just a, a bumbling idiot? Is he a really smart guy? You know, who's very shrewd, who stays up. Is he an evil person? Is he not the evil? He's just, you know, he listen, he, in the end, he pointed Mordechai, you know, uh, but he's not mentioned. It's Haman who did it. Yes, of course, Sachashvir is, is no tzaddik. You don't just give the guy the ring. Yeah, you want to kill everybody? Give me 10,000, you know, talents, whatever money you're going to raise. And uh, he didn't recognize the economic damage that would happen by getting rid of the Jews. He thought, I'll take my money now. We know throughout history, whenever Jews are expelled, there's always economic suffering of those, those, those countries. But um, so now, and then on Hanukkah, we tell the whole story, you know, the, what they wanted to do. And God, God's Lashki Cham Torah Techa, we should forget Torah, Chukei Ritzonecha, and, and you and your mercy, you know, so many things that God did for us. Uh, we describe in great detail what happened, and you made a great name for yourself, and a chua for Khan Kayom and then they came in, and then what happened? They came into, in the temple, came they came in, and they re they uh, reestablished the Beit HaMikdash, Tiaruot Mikdash Shecha, and they lit candles. There, there's a mitzvah to, to, to light candles. Uh, the mitzvah to light candles that we do on Hanukkah is to remember what they did in time. There's no mitzvah to light at home. That's, uh, we discussed on, at, at Hanukkah that it's it seems to me, I I think this is correct. I don't know for sure, but some people, some people say that the mitzvah to light Hanukkah candles was done the Shana Acher, I think where it says, in another year. And that probably means after the temple was destroyed. From the year 165 BC to the year 70, there's no mitzvah to light Hanukkah candles. That's in the Beit HaMikdash. And then in the genius of the rabbis, when the temple is destroyed, what's left of Hanukkah? You can't celebrate Hanukkah anymore. <laughs> there's no temple. You don't celebrate J July 4th if there's no America, God forbid. You know, you don't go and, uh, so what, what are you going to celebrate? So the rabbis converted our house, our Batei Knesiot, into a, a temple. So now we're going to light candles. But uh, but the real mitzvah is to light in there. So a whole story, what happened, the great description, you don't have any of that for him. It's like in three lines. Uh, that's a verse from the Megillah. We know this. This is the Pasuk in the Megillah. Let's kill everybody, men, women, children. That's a, a Pasuk in the Megillah. But thank God you're, you're great. You didn't let him carry out. His thoughts could not come to. to fruition um and he got his the you know his he got what's the word you know he wanted to kill Hama and Mordechai and the tree he got his own tree back it was thrown back on him he got his do what was deserving of him instead of hanging Mordechai they hung him that's it period whoa 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 and what happened afterwards and therefore what so that's a little bit what we're talking about there is no there for what because um nothing happened that's what we said nothing happened after Purim. they're paying they're playing uh they're paying taxes it's not it's not about and on alanisim and hanukkah the focus is on the jewish people what happened you know we were saved god you gave us a great miracle we could go build the beit amigdash on Purim, it's about haman wanted to kill us and god you didn't let haman kill us it's not against what's happening on the on the on the jewish people at all um so anyways um okay so that's um oh, just give me a second hold on so that's um um so there's nothing about what is what happened to the, the people why why not okay so i said because not nothing happened there's another thing purim is really a template of the jewish people uh, in other words Pur purim has no historical context to the story of of Megillah there um what do you mean? There's no, uh, there's, there's, in other words, the Megillah, we don't know when it takes place. By We don't know who Achashverosh is. There's a debate in rabbinic literature. Did, um, did Purim take place before the Jews went back to Israel, after the Jews went back to Israel? Because Purim is basically a template for the Jew living in exile. I mentioned earlier, that's why it's a take off on, on the Yosef story. In other words, basically the Megillah is in every generation. 
what's it's the state of the Jewish people living in exile, and therefore um, it doesn't have a particular story. It's written in a very ambiguous form to to, to take place. At that moment, the Purim, the original Purim, how the Jewish people were saved because Haman couldn't carry out his uh, his plan. But what happened afterwards, we don't know. We don't know what happens afterwards. Um, and because what happens afterwards is is different in every generation. So that's just one. I think you know it's very interesting. There's nothing happened afterwards. But who who's missing in Alanisim on Purim? Is Esther Jewish. and Mordechai? It's the exact opposite of of of, of the story itself. Megillah and Esther. We know there's no God, and not there's no God. God forbid. God doesn't appear. That God is behind the scenes. He's director of the play. Who you don't see, you know, the, you never see the director is off stage, and God is off stage in Purim, and His name isn't mentioned at all, and um, uh, and so in Alanisim is the exact opposite. Alanisim, we don't mention Esther, we don't mention Mordechai. I think it's so beautiful. It's such a fascinating idea that um, the whole Purim story is all about Esther and Mordechai. There's no God. The Gemara says at the end of the period of prophecy. That's why there's a whole debate. We don't know what to do. Uh, when yet, right? Until Purim, basically, what was the role of the Jewish people? The role of the Jewish people to listen to what prophets say. That's not so easy. <laughs> the prophets say, do social justice, don't oppress the poor, justice for everybody, take care of the poor. Uh, that's, uh, the powerful always like to give themselves more power, right? That's uh, what, what do prophets do, right? I just read this week a beautiful line. Let's see if I remember it correctly. Quoting Jonathan Sachs, he says, there's a difference between a prediction and a prophecy, uh, right? Prophets are not people who predict the future. That's not, uh, a prophet is a social critic. He warns you, you know, anybody can warn you. If you take these really bad economic moves, you do really dumb things. So bad things are are, are, are going to happen to you, right? That's what a prophet does. He's not predicting the future. So, so, so when a prediction happens, that's good. But he says, when a prophecy takes place, happens, that's a tragedy. When 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 the prophets say, you know, the temple is going to be destroyed, we don't want that to be happen. They're they're not telling you what's going to happen. They're telling you if you don't change, this is what's going to happen. Not because God is punishing you, because that's a natural course of events. If the Jewish people are not united, that's what Purim's all about. The unity of Jewish people is something we very much need nowadays. If the Jewish people are not united, their enemies rejoice. We see right now. Hayom, today we see we see our enemies rejoice because the, the Jewish people are disunited, very very sad. So um so that's you know that's um so we just had to listen to, to prophets. That was very hard to do, but we knew what to do. Purim comes along, our mission is very different. We have to figure out what to do. God doesn't tell us what to do. So Mordechai and Esther are arguing. Uh, they, yeah, do this, don't do that. What should we do? But ultimately, that's much better. That's really, that's, uh, you know, God, we're, we're little children until Purim. And then we grew up a little bit and God had to tell us what to do. So the McGill itself has no God, that, that, no God mentioned. We have to figure out what to do. Of course, in al a Jew recognizes, of course, God is behind everything. So in the story itself, God doesn't appear. But obviously in al Anisim, Mordechai and Esther don't appear. And of course, this is the exact opposite of Pesach, right? On Pesach, um, 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 God's, Moshe's name doesn't appear in the the Haggadah. That's crazy. <laughs> As I always say, it's like telling the story of the United States without George Washington. I know I'm Canadian, but uh, it's better than saying Canada and John A. McDonald. People will say, who's John A. McDonald? And today they've sort of canceled him a little bit because, you know, he was uh, anti-Blacks uh, and things, you know, that were, were common in 1867. But um, George Washington also, if they canceled him, I don't even know. I'm not up on the latest. But uh, um, George, so how can you tell the story of American independence without George Washington? How can you have a night where we're obligated to tell story and you don't mention Moshe's name? That's ridiculous. The whole story is about Moshe. But th that's, of course, the, the point that the, uh, the, the Haggadah were, were driving home the notion of God. Of course, Moshe is important, but that, that's not the focus of the Haggadah. We don't tell history is history. History always has an idea, um, a message. We're reliving it. So the, what's the message a Pesach God is the person who protects us. He passes over our home. 
he redeems us, he has a message for us. It's all about God. The Yadu meets right now. Power is going to know. I don't know who God is. Power is going to know. The Jewish people are going to know. So we ignore Moshe. It's not historically true, but it doesn't have to be historically true. And I'm poor, we do the ex exact opposite. We ignore God because there's a maturation. We the idea is to recognize God even when God isn't obvious, and that's why Purim and Pesach. You know, we we can compare. Okay, so I'm basically there are three holidays we've already compared Purim to to Yom Kippur. That is Yom Kippurim. That's the day we received the the, the the Torah. That's the explanation we've given so far why Purim is like Yom Kippur. Obviously, Purim and Hanukkah because they're the two rabbinic holidays. They're the holidays of Thanksgiving, the holidays of Al Nisim, and now we're comparing Purim. And Pesach, which is, okay, it's not an issue this year, but the reason when there's um, Purim, when there's two others, like there was last year, and there will be again next year, actually Purim's going to be quite late, when there will be two others, so um, um, we celebrate Purim and Adar Beit. It should be Adar Aleph. Well, wait a minute, why push it off? Mitzvah Baliyatcha, when you have a mitzvah, do it right away. Others, the first other is the real other. Adar Beit is a add-on. It's not meant to, they sometimes add it in the last day of the year. So, but no, the Gemara says we want Purim and Pesach next to each other. The redemption of Purim and the redemption of Purim have to be much next to each other because that's, um, because the Geula, the Geula, Misma Geula, the redemption and redemption are near each other, but they're totally opposite redemptions. One, the redemption is totally about God and one, the redemption is totally about man. That's the beauty. At the beginning of the year, Purim, uh, Pesach at the beginning, it's all God, God, God. Okay, by the end of the year, we're ready for Purim. But we have to transition. Purim and Pesach have to be next to each other. What's true in our calendar is also true historically. Purim, Pesach is the first time, the beginning of the Jewish people happens on Pesach, and Purim is the end of, of, of Tanakh. Esther is, you know, all there are few books at the same time. Esther, Malachi, Devarim, but, but Esther is basically the last of the 24 books of, of Tanakh. So we've gone from um, Pesach to Purim, historic in Tanakh. Tanakh is the word of God. In the Chumash, in the in the tough of Tanakh, in the Torah part of Tanakh, it's words God's words dictated to Moshe. In the Nevim and the Ksuvim, um, it's God's indirect word. It's uh, generally the Navi. That's the basic difference. The Navi puts it in his own words. It's not a dictation from God. It's a Navi. So every Navi has their own style. You can see there the stylistic like changes between every Navi. But basically. The Tanakh is the, uh, the the communication of God to man. Now it's for him. We don't have that anymore. Now we're moving towards Shabbat Peh. God held up the mountain. Ah, but finally on Purim, we accepted Tor Shabbat. What's Tor Shabbat Peh? Tor Shabbat is all about man. Uh, what, and what happens when there's a debate between man and God? We spoke about that last week in Tor Loba Shemaimhi. God is very happy. We overrule God. We don't. We don't care about God. Once God gave us the Torah, He has no say in it. We, it's up, up. So that's Purim is a very transitional point in Jewish history where we were from God to man. But and therefore, it's all the more important in El Anisim to talk about only God and not to talk about Purim um, at all. And and the focus basically what happened on Purim. Haman wanted to kill us, like that old old joke, you know, all, all days. Whether well, they, they wanted to kill us, we were saved. Let's eat, you know. That's basically in 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 Hanukkah. It it builds up. There's no there's no killing of the Jews. It's just we should become Greeks. They they are not interested in killing us. Haman He wanted to wipe us. That's what Purim is about, and that's of course why um, the Levush writes this. I think it's quoted in the Mishnah Bura at the beginning of the laws of of, of Purim. Why is there no meal on Hanukkah? Maybe uh, you sing songs, fine. You can make a, a Suda mitzvah, but there there's no mitzvah to have a meal. On Hanukkah, but there is on Purim because Purim is a physical holiday and uh, Hanukkah is a, a spiritual holiday. And in many ways, you know, poor, you know, one of the things you can do it's uh, if you want to, you know, get upset about uh, how ineffective. I shouldn't say this, but how sometimes you know kids don't know the the basics. Go into you know, go into a typical school, whatever, and ask somebody what happened first, Hanukkah or Purim. You'd be amazed how many people are not sure. Now it's a 50 50, you know, guess, but, uh, you know, they're 300 years apart, but not everybody realizes that Purim happened before Hanukkah, way before. But it
it's also it's the same thing physical and spiritual just like Pesach and Shavuot so if Hanukkah is already beyond the period of, of, of Tanakh Purim is the transitional period and Hanukkah is not in but it's the same idea we begin with our physical freedom so Purim we party you know all the uh well, amazing things and then on Hanukkah is the this the spiritual holiday but uh Alanisim is short to the point. Hama wanted to kill us. God, God saved us. Okay, let's do. do we have, what was the question I said I might get to at the end? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I forget that you asked. Rambam. Us. Oh, the Rambam. How does the Rambam say that? Yeah. So let's um, let's very quickly. I'm going to pull up the Rambam. I don't have it uh, prepared. Like I didn't prepare the source, but I will quickly look it up. Let's go here. Safaria. Um, halacha. Everybody see this, right? Mishnah Torah, yeah. um, Sefer Zmanim, right? Sefer Zmanim. You see here, Hanukkah and Purim go together, right? The Hanukkah, and this is the end of Hilchot Purim. And then the Rambam writes like this: the end is the last law, I believe, in Hilchot Purim. How you write the Megillah? Okay, Tzaricha Kore. Okay. Um, mitzvah to, to eat and celebrate. Okay, it's a long paragraph. Okay, matanot lev yonim have a suda. Ah. All the Tanakh except for the Torah, nevim and tuvim, in the future are going to be nullified in the messianic period. Chutz mimigid let Esther, where he kayemet kechamesha chum she Torah. It'll be like the Torah, the Tanakh. Be a lot easier in Chidon Hatanach. Lots more people can compete in Chidon Hatanach. Only six books to learn. They'll be like the oral law uh, the, that that cannot change. Even though they'll all be forgotten, you may purim elo Right. So um, yeah, that that's what the Rambam writes. There'll only be the holiday of Purim. So let's see very quickly if I can remember what they uh, comment. Let's take a quick look. I remember here, but uh, here. I your show me, okay. Right, so the Ravid doesn't like it, obviously. Amar of Ram, lo yivatel the varmik gosferim. Shane safer, shame boli mood. What are you nuts? I, I, the 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 Ravid wasn't afraid to. No, it's Amar of Ram. That's Rav of Ram ben David, the Ravid. He's like 15 years older than the Rambam. He's living in Provence, um, in between France and Spain. Um, no, nothing's going to be nullified. I love that language. There's no book that doesn't have a message. Even if you were going to get rid of anything, you would never get rid of Purim. In other words, there's the most to learn from Purim, but it's impossible things would got rid of. How the Rambam can say such a thing is a little mind-boggling. Um, it's pretty wild. Right um, now, the Rambam's not talking about changing any mitzvah because, according to the Rambam, you can only have. I see. I've explained this before. Right. I, I often ask people, and with with, with this, we will have to end. Um, why there's 613 mitzvah? There's six million mitzvah. What do you mean 613 mitzvah? The Shabbos, there are five thousand mitzvah. What do you mean there's thirty? What do you mean there's 613 mitzvah? So, what difference does it make? We know there are thousands of biblical laws, but there are only 613 mitzvot. So they're in categories. It's a, oh, okay, but what difference does it make if it's part of the 613 mitzvot or not? Who cares if something is a biblical law? Like the, the Rambam says, anything derived from the 13 principles, like a klalu prat, Rabbi Shmuel, that's 98% of the Torah. That there are 39 melachot on Shabbat is not written in the Torah. It's derived. The rabbis derive it. Anything derived, it's a biblical law. But it's not a mitzvah. It's not one of the Taring mitzvah. Who cares? If it's a biblical lie, you have to uh, observe it. So very simply, I don't have time to develop this now. Very simply, the answer is that interpretation can change. We get a Sanhedrin now. You know, I know it sounds radical. The Sanhedrin can decide there are only 24 of Malachot on Shabbos, not 39. We think writing is not included in the prohibition on Shabbos. And writing will then become allowed on Shabbos. Or we think there are 45 Malachot. Uh, we think uh, more things are prohibited. That's Totally fine. That's the right and the obligation of a Sanhedrin to interpret the Torah's day secrets. We don't have a Sanhedrin. That's the whole, you know, whatever. Um, but 630, that cannot change. That's what the Rambam says. It's an apicorus. And, the, the, you know, the, that can never change. But the, so unless it's a pasuk in the Chumash, it's not part of Taryag Mitzvah. So anything in the Vim and Tuvim is not the pasuk in Chumash. 
So even though we learn all of Kavod Shabbos and Onik Shabbos that we have to honor as a Pasuk in Yeshayahu, that's how we know we have to get ready on Friday. It's not just, there's a mitzvah to eat, have nice things, Kavod and Onik. Those halachas are derived, we read it on the Torah of Yom Kippur, are derived on from Yeshayahu. It's not a Pasuk in Chumash, it's not a mitzvah from the Torah. And that, that can change, so it's Patel. We don't, uh, we don't, we don't going to have it anymore. I, I think it's astounding, but it's it really, it's not just Ev, it's not just some metric somewhere. I mean, I don't know, I don't know what's interesting. I don't know what's more important, some metric somewhere or the Rambam, but uh, I assume the Rambam. The, the Rambam carries more authority. I, it's an interesting discussion. Uh, the Rambam uh, probably practically carries more authority than the Medjish, because the Rambam's writing a halachic book. The Medjish is not a halachic book. Anyways, it's getting late. Let's do a quick review, and then I'll quickly do some of, of the questions. So uh, we discussed uh, Purim, the whole difficulty. Should Purim be a holiday? Shouldn't it be a holiday? Why we don't say Halal Purim? Three reasons. It's, it, it didn't happen in Israel. No big deal. We pay taxes. That's why chapter 10 is in the Megillah. Nothing really changed. Or maybe Purim is so important important the, we have its own halal for 10 chapters of the Megillah. It's so important. It's more than Yom Kippur. So we just gave one idea that's Yom Kippur because on uh, we accepted the, the, the Torah willingly only on Purim, not on Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is rammed down our throat with the mountain. I will say one other very brief thing, and you can think about that. It's better to worship God with feasting and fasting, right? We, we can worship God in celebration and worship God in shul all day, banging our hearts. It's a much higher level. It's a much harder level to worship God. There are other explanations, but that's uh, so a whole discussion. Should Purim be a holiday? Shouldn't be a holiday? The rabbis, no, yes, we, we don't want to celebrate that we defeated non-Jews. But Purim is a holiday, but we don't say Hallel. And then uh, we discussed the uh, Yalav Yavon Al Hanisim. Yalav Yavon is for the biblical holidays. It's really a prayer for the restoration of our service. And therefore, it's said in the Bracha Avota, Ritzay, where we talk about the restoration of the, the our temple service. And um, Modim, Al Hanisim is on the past. We thank God for these rabbinic, these great events in Jewish history. We do allude to that in those events and our events by Amim Ahim, Basman And we don't add, even though some customs did, we don't add any prayers. Just Thanksgiving, and now we say in the uh, the bracha, of course, in Al Hanisim, it's much shorter. There's no mention of Esther. Very strange, the exact opposite of the Megillah, where there's no mention of God. So in the Al Hanisim, there's no mention of of Esther because that's the whole point. Yes, on on the facts, you know, as it happens, God is behind the scenes. But when we pray, we reflect on what happened. Obviously, it's all about God and Purim and. And Pesach are the opposites in this way. Pesach, we ignore Moshe. The story ignores Moshe, so to speak, although that's not, of course, Moshe is important, but not at the Seder night. Not the night we're giving thanksgiving to recognize God. Not then. And the same way, that's the opposite of Purim. And Purim and Pesach have to be next to each other. The two types of redemption, but two totally opposite types of redemption. Purim, in many ways, is a higher level, right? It's the end of the... It, God doesn't talk to us directly anymore. Esther is the end of the prophets. And we have to figure it on our own. It's more meaningful, but it's harder. And we're going to have debate and discussion. We're not sure what 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 to do. But uh, the Alanisim is... And what it... Haman wanted to wipe us out, period, end of story. That's it. Okay, I think more or less, let me just quickly take the questions I see. I haven't really looked at them. Uh, so if you can send me, Ross, and, oh, so send me, can send me, if you want the link to the series on Zmani. Okay, uh, yep, okay, I'll try to copy this now. Okay, David Eisen, I think it's fair to say that Jews and Shushan can only survive, right? How assimilated were they? Where there was no place for them um, to thrive. That's a very interesting point. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we seem to thrive here in 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 America. I don't know. They, you don't think they? I, I understand it's a very different environment. You don't. In other words, they had no choice. They had to assimilate. Is that what you're saying, David? I'm I'm not sure, but uh, it is an interesting point. Um, no place for them to thrive. Maybe the idea for Avinet. I'm sorry, I don't uh, have to think about that more. The idea for Avinet Paskins that those soldiers do not have a kosher megillah. Are we, oh, very. I did not know that. Following the. The Meiri, they have to say hello. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you for that. Okay. Could the Purim story have an affinity with the struggles of conversos and the Jews? Of course. That's when I say Purim is a template for the Jew in exile. Obviously, we have to read it like, uh, you know, people read it in political theory. I mean, it can, it's, that's the, more than any other story, the Megillah can be read on so many levels. That's why there's so many books. Everybody reads this Purim story on a different level. Is it, a, a, like I say, is it attacking the Jews in the diaspora? We, we lowlifes who haven't moved to Israel. What are you, crazy? You don't recognize God. You don't recognize the danger. And it can be read in many different levels. So absolutely, I'm sure conversos would struggle. And we, we living, I living in Toronto, 
I have to read, and even people today in Israel. So I think today we have to read, how do we keep the unity? Obviously what's going on now, it's worse than it's ever been, the, the potential tear between Jews in Israel and Jews outside of Israel. Purim is about Mishloch Manot, Israel, we're one people, and the faith, that's what Rav Soloveitchik also explained. Purim teaches us the fate of Jews are intertwined. You can't uh, say this Jew is assimilated. No, no, no. The Jews in Persia may be totally assimilated. Achashverosh Haman didn't care, right? We share one faith. That's what Rav always talked about it. Israel, Diaspora, we're one people. So that's, we have to figure out from the poor answer, what are we going to do? I, I, I don't know. What I'm, it's a very hard question. I wish I knew. I'd love to hear your advice of what I can, David, maybe you can tell me, what can I do living in Toronto to help? I don't know. You probably wonder what to do in Beit Shemesh, what you can do to help besides going to whatever. It's, it's, it's a hard question. But Megillah, it's a it's a hard book, right? That's a Tanakh. You're not supposed to go half an hour, enjoy it, and bang come on, yay, and have a party and get drunk. And right, why do we get drunk? We we get drunk because when a Jew drinks, the inside should be like the outside. Toho kaboro. It shouldn't when when a, when a normal person drinks, so they start talking like uh, they're embarrassed uh, what they said. But if a Jew is full of of of, of Torah, there's nothing to be embarrassed. Purim is about everything's hidden, so we're revealing the inside when we drink. Now, if if you're the type of, of a, a, a person who's afraid when you get drunk, you're going to say things that you're going to regret, then you can't drink on porn. It's the idea that what's the inside and the outside is the same. We're taking off our mask. I mean, everything, is, these customs are beautiful. But um, if somebody has ideas what we can do to help Purim should be the story of the unity of Jewish people, I would love to hear. Okay. Uh, Yala Biavo is only said when there is a korban. Right. Correct. That's what we're saying. It's their biblical holiday, the restoration of the service. You probably I said that afterwards. Okay. Purim and Chanukah are not holidays in Torah. That's correct. How is a king, how is King A identified as, oh, it's Achashver. He's there, is right. His father was Darius. They just, the king wasn't the commoner. Uh, uh, standing, yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, I I don't know all the right who Achashverosh was. Right there, it's a whole discussion about that. But why does it mean he went? Oh, you're saying he wasn't the commoner. His father was Darius, right? According to the rabbis, it's Vashti Amalkad. The the Malbim has a beautiful, you know, shot there. Um, Achashverosh calls Vashti Hamalka, and it's Vitamain Hamalka Vashti. When I, to Achashverosh. She is only Vashti and she's the queen because she's married to the queen. So it's Vashti Hamalka. And when Vashti refuses to come, but him ain't Hamalka Vashti. No, I'm the Malka. Happened to be Vashti. Yeah, so I don't know, whatever. That's how the rabbis, when the rabbis read the majority, they're not necessarily explaining historical. They, they don't have to be historically accurate. They're, you know, it's like uh, when a lot of the stories on the rabbis, the stories may not be true, but they're, they are, uh, I forget, they may not have happened, but they are true. Now, even if a story didn't happen, it doesn't mean it's not true. I know that's uh, maybe you can, you know, but uh, in a certain level. Okay. Rabbi Lamb said the concept of holding a mountain should be viewed as allegorical. Yeah, of course. He said the Jews felt psychologically under the rest except the Torah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I Of course, all Midrashim are like that. But it does say Tachdid. It was it's as if they were physically compelled. Okay, very good. Okay, somebody said to me privately, Achashver was celebrating that. He, yes, of course. The rabbis say he thought the seventy years of as vikelim, mikelim shonim. He brought the kelim of the Beit Hamikdash and he had them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the classical reading. But uh, whether it's necessary, according to other readings, no, it happened later. Happened much later. But yeah, okay. The, uh, in Chazal, the Megillah took place in between the first and 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 the second temple you related to Purim why not to 1880s and 1948 I'm not sure what you're talking about I know what the it is to Purim but uh yeah 1940 everything's related to Purim everything in the Galut I'm not sure if you want to clarify um you said it related to the Joseph story why not to the return of uh, to the return to the land in great it's also, yeah yeah it's, that's not a common from from a biblical perspective it's clear that the story of the McGill is a rewriting if you can use that term of I the remember Joseph it's story. also a story that some of your heroes don't look good in because they only accept it yeah, in, in good. This is, even Yosef, you can there's much to criticize of course uh, this gets to the old question you know how when we read the books how how much are we willing to you know criticized our great uh heroes yeah ab absolutely no when when it says the son hey i just read the majority of his brothers the bar says the sanhedrin didn't like mordecai they viewed him in a very negative light yeah then obviously they make mistakes and uh whatever but uh anyways i i will say i I'll, i mentioned right at the, the beginning i'll just end with this that uh 
you know, I started that I'm at this rabbinic conference, JJ Shachter, really a very in, in, inspiring three days of learning. So Rabbi Brander was uh, here as he's actually speaking at uh, here in Bell Harbor, where we are together over Shabbos. I'll go here and speak uh, at the shul and on, on Shabbos morning. But he began this, Mordechai tells us if you're quiet at this time, you know, who knows? Uh, there'll be salvation too, but you you won't be part of it. You'll lost. And that's how he started. He was really the only one. He, he, it was all about, about learning, but he addressed a little bit the situation today. And we have to speak up. People have to speak up. We're not allowed to. We believe will we'll, we'll come, but uh, we have to be uh, part of that. And uh, it's very hard, but uh, being quiet is not an option. And again, that gets to detention. It's becoming full force now. How much can Jews in the diaspora? How much are they allowed to weigh in? And Israel, I don't want you know whatever. It's uh, but that we that's I think how we today should be reading the the our, our Megillatus there. This poem I think is very much we should read it on that level. But then I would love to hear ideas that people have. And yes, um, okay. Uh, a much longer conversation. Yes. Um, okay. Thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate it. Um, Sunday morning, Rabbi Liebtag. And, uh, can I, can I ask you me. something? Sure, uh, absolutely. Yeah. I want to wish everybody uh, something I, I, I don't, you very much. I don't think you, I don't think I heard it discussed was uh, the actual reason behind why we celebrate uh, uh, like the 14th in, 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 uh, in certain parts and the 15th in other parts. Right. So it, and, in and, the history, as a story unfolds, it's the only it's the only hug that's right. So that, whole, that's why some read it as a holiday of, of tension. I remember. Well, so what I wanted to say was that I heard it was because the Yehudim didn't want to accept Purim after. Right, that's correct. They didn't. So want therefore, to accept they were Purim. punished, yeah. and they say we can't accept. We can't. You can't celebrate it on the fourteenth. You have to celebrate it on the fifteenth. I mean, in the Megillah, Mordechai said the 15th because they fought an extra day in Shushan. But it's clear the Jews didn't accept it and it went through through stages. But if you look at the Megillah, Mordechai wanted for him to be two days for everybody. There was there it happened in Shushan a day later, but as a Jewish people, when we look back to celebrate, we're one people. So it's Purim is a two day holiday. It's fourteen fifteen. We don't say Tachanun today, right? The, there were you know the only way you can celebrate today Purim the fourteen fifteenth if you go to Israel and you go to Tel Aviv and then Yerushalayim, you can figure it out to hear the Megillah four times, which of course a lot of the yeshiva guys do, you know, to party an extra day, whatever. But um, um, it was meant to be two days, and I think David Silver pointed out, right? How does Megillah? How does in Masech and Megillah, it opens Megillah Nikre Yadal of Yabait Yud Gimel Yud Delta. The Masech and Megillah opens up with dissensions, so to speak. The Jews are reading it on five different days. At this, if you live here, you live there. Everything, you know, all dependent. It's it's sort of Purim didn't unite the people. He he has a whole theory that the rabbis wanted to downplay Purim. That's why they stuck it in in Masech and Megillah. It talks about about about. Torah reading. Half of my second Megillah is not about Torim, it's about Torah reading. They wanted to sort of take it out of this own party and put it part of the structure of the Beit Knesset of Kriyat HaTorah. They wanted to downplay some of the wildness that uh, Purim lends itself to. But, uh, you know, again, that we have a concept of a Purim Katan where individual Jews, great events happen to them. They celebrate their own Purim. Purim's a complex, like everything in Judaism, it's complex, but Purim is an especially complex holiday. And because the Megillah, as I say, a template, it didn't, it's not written in the historical time frame. It's written as a template for the Jew for all time. Obviously, it's going to have every... More, it's true about every holiday and everything in the Polish, but more so by Purim, we have to read it in terms of our lives today and try to apply it. Okay, uh, any uh, other comments? Uh, uh, uh what? Uh, oh, uh, Marty, yes, how are you? I am fine. Uh, two, two, I want, I want, want, I used to, when I used to come to New York. From Toronto, I used to stay up with a family who lived on the same block, block as the cowboy show. And we used to go there on Friday night. They started making 
when it was darker. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. In the Hasidic world, they're very um, Rabbeinu Tamish, even on Friday. So I don't know if they, you know, will will turn on lights or drive their car 20 minutes after sunset, although uh, maybe they will. Um, but Davin Mincha, for sure. Lots of Hasidim Davin Mincha way after all Davin Mari. You know, um, but but the truth of the matter is that's the psak in the show. It's very hard. Why that's so? That's what the Vilna Gaon got sort of upset. The Vilna Gaon said, Hachush machish. The Vilna said, you walk outside, it's pitch black. How can Rabbeinu Tam say it's still yesterday? It's pitch black outside. So that's a whole, you know, it, it's a really complicated area of halakha. Mm -hmm. Rabbi Willig years ago wrote a series of articles and it's not just 72 minutes. It has to do with how far you live from the equator, of course. So many things. But yes, the Hasidim will dub in Mincha when it's quote unquote dark, and they hold that's not an issue. And yeah. uh, about Purim, I remember uh, being a in Toronto many years ago with Seymour uh, Epstein. Mm -hmm. and, he said, and I remember what he said that, 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 that. That it's about a simulation. How do you know that the McGill begins with a mister and it ends with a mister? So you know that 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 in the McGill the Jews haven't learned anything. So I always found that a very interesting comment. They hadn't learned anything. Yeah, because yeah. they end, they they end up as, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, that's it. What what were the Jews thinking? You know, you don't hear too much from the Jews. Kind of like on the Pesach story, you don't hear too much from the Jews while the events are are happening. But uh, the rabbis are critical of Jewish people. Yeah, they they uh, enjoyed the Hashem's party. They did all kinds of things. Yeah, but. Uh, but you know, it's uh, what what can they say? Porn is. Uh... I have one more question. Sure. And, uh, yeah, I will be able. I yeah, will be able, yeah. Why on Chagim do you move it out of the Huda section and you put it? No, it's not. So that that's what I'm saying. It's not under the Hoda section. It's in the third section. Britse begins the third section of uh, Hoda'a. The whole section is called Sheva. First, uh, Hoda. Hoda. Uh, even though, the, but the Hoda'a, Hoda'a is the middle one, really, is Modim. Okay. The Hoda'a has three brachas. One on Avoda, service in the temple, one on Thanksgiving, and one on peace. But they're all under the framework of Hoda. So that's what we're explaining. The Yala Biyavo, which is biblical holidays and sacrifices, Yala, like uh, yeah. who, what, Ro, Rosie, I think, who pointed but, that? But uh, why did they change on the Yantav? So, right, so on Yantav, so we're, we're praying for the restoration of the sacrifices in in, in Ritzay. Ala Nisim, Hanukkah Purim, we're, we're not praying for the restoration of anything, especially Purim. I mean, uh, so we just, it's a, just a form of thanksgiving. So it's in what we call hodam in emodim. Yeah, that's what we're saying. Yalav yavo and al nitzim. The the themes are very different. The the context, of, even though both are the special. And by the way, I I forgot to mention. If you forget yalav yavo, you have to repeat the shmon esrei. If you forget al nitzim, you don't. Which is kind of interesting. You might think that Thanksgiving is more important than asking for a restoration, which I would agree with. If I, I I never thought of it like this until right now. But if I ask myself, yes, I would say Thanksgiving is more important. But halakhically, if you forget the uh, oh, da no, no, you don't have to repeat the Shmon Esrei. But if you forget Yalav Yabo, that's a fundamental aspect of the Tvilah, and you have to repeat the Shmon Esrei. That's the uh, Sinjinjuring Halakh. I have to think more about that. Why by Thanksgiving we don't, but that's the famous Halakh. If you forget Al Anisim, you don't have to repeat the Shmon Esrei. Okay, everybody, I think uh, it's late. I know Shabbos no, but... are getting later. Baruch Hashem, even in Israel, David, wow. What time is, is, is Shabbos in, uh, in Beit Shemesh? I don't know, but I guess it's pretty soon. Thank you very much. And uh, everybody should be well. We should hear good news. We should really pour him. That's when the Simcha should be a time. Uh, pour him is a time when things look dark that they get better. So let's hope that happens today. Amen. Unfortunately, there's a little too much, you know, darkness, and we need Ora Basimcha Basasan Kinti Alana that we should have. I want to wish everybody a Shabbat Shalom, and thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Shabbat hey, my shalom. pleasure. Okay. Be well. we'll see you next week. Please, God. Thank you. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thank shalom. you. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Uh, Snow in Ottawa this weekend, too. They oh, tell another, 10 centimeters, another 10 to 15. What about you? Are they saying Toronto? What I hear, 30. I'm not in Toronto, but that's what my Toronto spies tell me. They're expecting up 30? to 30 centimeters. Oh. Oh yeah, big goodness. snowstorm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, what can you do? Today or tomorrow? March. Today I mean, what do you expect? Oh, yes, I forgot. Every March there's a big snowstorm. Yeah. In like a oh, lion, out like a lamb, you know? That's yeah, yeah. March. Okay, enjoy wherever okay. you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good Shabbos. Okay, bye-bye.